It's every parent's worst nightmare. Craig and Sonia Winters left their six-year-old son, Luke, with a family babysitter. When they returned from dinner, their son, Luke, was dead. Beaten to death, the victim of murder. Where's your daughter? Have the police told you anything? No, nothing. We haven't heard from Jenny since she left our house last night to go babysit Luke. How old is your daughter? Jenny's only 15. She was supposed to be home by midnight. When she wasn't, we got worried and drove over to the Winter's house. It was surrounded by police. And they wouldn't tell us what was going on. A neighbor told us he saw the police take Jenny away in a squad car. But she's only a child. She's been with the police for seven hours. Don't they have to let us see her? Not if Jenny volunteered to go with them. Well, the cops aren't talking, and they're not telling Jenny that her lawyers are here. I'm going in there to find her. Well, let us handle this. You'll just get yourself arrested. That won't help Jenny. We are going to find a way to get in there and stop the police from interrogating her. I'll call the duty magistrate, get an emergency habeas corpus. It's an order that forces the cops to let us see Jenny. I'll put the media on notice. Jenny's a minor. If they release her name, we'll sue. I'll check with my contacts inside, see who the detective is on this. You two, come with me. Ron, I'm at the winner's house. Looks like the police pretty much finished their investigation. There's only one squad car here. Great, Alden. Thanks. Talk to their neighbors. Find out what you can. Fax? Yeah, yeah, we can get it by fax. Sure, Your Honor. Yeah, your clerk's got the number. Well, the basis for the habeas is Section 626 of the California Code. It, it grants lawyers immediate access to a minor if they're being held in police custody. But we don't know if she did go voluntarily. That's why we need the motion. We've never even met her. Great. Thank you. I'm the supervisor detective. Now, how can I help you, Mr. Grace? Jenny Marshall is 15 years old, detective. When a minor is detained, they're supposed to notify her parents and let her talk to her attorney. We didn't do that. We didn't have to. She volunteered to answer questions. So she could have walked out at any time. She was not detained. Look, folks, I'm really sorry I feel for you. But this line of questioning is standard procedure following an unexplained death. Either you tell us where Jenny is or I'm going to go back into that detective bureau and find her myself. You try that, and I'm going to throw you out of the building. Excuse me. Habeas. Duty magistrate judge just issued it. It orders you to let Jenny Marshall go. Not until I show it to a DA. Excuse me. Yes, the girl left with one of the detectives. Did she say anything? If you heard something, it could help an innocent girl. She said she wanted to see her parents. She seemed pretty upset. Are you her lawyer? Yes, my partner's and I are defending her. Ask her why she was walking around with a baseball bat last night. I saw her with it. Look. Work, Alden. Alden had a witness who heard Jenny asking to see her parents as the police led her away. So she didn't go voluntarily. That's good for us. The bad news is the witness also saw Jenny holding a baseball bat. You're saying Luke was beaten to death, right? Excuse me. DA wants to appeal the emergency habeas. He's stalling. Every second Jenny is alone with the police, the more likely it is that she'll incriminate herself. She can't. She didn't do anything wrong. She couldn't have. She would never hurt a child. Okay, new plan. Track down an appellate judge. Tell him what Alden heard from the neighbor. Try to convince him to let us see Jenny. I'll find out where Jenny's being held. How if the cops won't tell you? The police aren't the only ones who work here. Good morning, Your Honor. Tom Nicholson, how are you? I need your help. It's important. Hola. Soy un abogado. Estoy buscando a esta muchacha. La has visto esta noche. ¿Dónde está? You see this? This allows us to see Jenny Marshall. Who are you? Jenny? We are lawyers. daughter's going to our juvenile facility downtown. You can see her there. Downtown? Why? She's been placed under arrest. For what? She just confessed to the murder of Luke Winters. Oh. No! No! 100% innocent. Like I always say, if you got the right lawyer with you, 
We've got the greatest legal system in the world. It was my fault. I was mad at Luke. I, I did him. I killed him. It's not true. I didn't kill Luke. I kept trying to tell the police that they wouldn't listen. They say you confessed to beating Luke to death with a baseball bat. No. No, I never said anything about a bat. The detective did. But a neighbor saw you walking around the house carrying a bat, Jenny. I grabbed the bat after the house alarm went off, but only to see if someone was breaking in. And sometimes the alarm goes off accidentally, so the winners gave me the code in case it did. It didn't look like anyone had broken in, so I turned the alarm off. And that's when I heard a thump upstairs. Ah, uh, I ran up, and I saw Luke lying on the floor. There was blood all around his head. And that's when I called 911. Did you tell that to the police? <laughs> I even told them that I thought that Luke had fallen from the bookcase. Bookcase? What bookcase? It's in his room. It's really tall. He kept trying to climb it, and I yelled at him to stop, but he just wouldn't. I even called his dad to ask him what to do, but he wouldn't pick up the phone. I kept warning his parents before that Luke was going to hurt himself on that bookcase. Luke was our only son. We trusted this girl to take care of him. And she killed him. Sorrow and anger from the grieving parents of Luke Winters, murdered by his teenage babysitter. This is becoming a media witch hunt with Jenny as the target. It's a hot button case. Jenny is going to be the poster child for every parent's worst fears. Oprah will be doing specials on whether parents should leave their kids alone with teenagers. That kind of story doesn't help us. It makes people afraid and angry, and they'll take it out on Jenny. She was an honor student, a church volunteer with no criminal record. She's got to be the least likely murder suspect ever. Yes, but the people still think she's a killer. She confessed. Jurors think only guilty people confess. We have to prove that's not true. You notice the confession's only 10 minutes long? No other footage? Well, sometimes police edit confession tapes to make more of an impact with the jury. We should take a closer look at the tape. Other than Jenny's confession, what evidence does the DA have that she killed Luke? Alden saw the police taking a baseball bat from the house. They must think that's the murder weapon. They believed it, so they must not be sure. Get the police to test the bat. When the police came to the house, did you agree to go with them or did they make you go? They just said I had to answer some questions. I asked if I could call my parents, and the detective said that I didn't even need to bother them. And then it just got later and later, and they wouldn't let me eat, and they wouldn't let me sleep. And I was so tired. I just, I couldn't even think straight. I kept saying that I didn't do anything. The detective said that he had evidence that proved that I had killed Luke. What evidence? Did he tell you? Witnesses and medical evidence. And then he said that he'd showed my parents the evidence and they thought that I had killed Luke too. After that, I just told him whatever he wanted to hear. Jenny's scared, but she's hanging in there. Will they let her come home? We'll do whatever it takes to pay her bail. We'll mortgage our house if we have to. By law, she's entitled to a reasonable bail. And she's not a flight risk, so we should be able to get her out. How could she confess if she didn't do it? She was scared. And I think the police took advantage of her. How? Well, the LAPD uses the same interrogation techniques as the FBI and the military. It's so intense that sometimes innocent people falsely confess. A quarter of all the people on death row who were cleared by DNA evidence falsely confessed. So we talked to Jenny. Now, at first, Detective Mendoza was friendly. That's how interrogators build rapport and gain trust. That's how he got her to sign away her Miranda rights. Next, he began asking her a lot of questions to try to back Jenny into a specific story. I got to the house for one day, but um, I was supposed to give Luke a bath. And then Mendoza turned on her. He said he had proof that she murdered Luke. He showed her false forensic reports, uh, witness statements. Exactly what you did to that little boy. He even told her that her own parents thought she was guilty. He had her in that room for hours. He broke her. Would you read this? So Mendoza told her she'd be better off admitting to the murders. It's my fault. When he said uh, she showed remorse, things would be okay. She confessed. I killed him. 
That was legal? She's just a girl. That's why we're gonna fight so hard to keep her confession out at trial. It's bad. We got a copy of Jenny's 911 tape. Listen to this. It's my fault. His head is bleeding. I, I think he's dead. She says it's her fault. Why would she say that? I don't know, but it gets worse. The police actually got an earlier 911 call from the winner's next door neighbor, the one to talked to Alden. It came in 10 minutes before Jenny's call. The girl is yelling. She's angry. I can see her through the window. She's carrying a baseball bat. She's my neighbor's babysitter. <sighs> So not only did the neighbor see Jenny holding the bat, she heard Jenny yelling. Great. Can the medical examiner prove Luke was killed by a baseball bat? So far, the Emmy's findings are inconclusive. All he says is Luke died from a blunt force trauma to the head. Did the Emmy say whether a fall could have caused the death? A fall? Off of what? A bookcase. Jenny says Luke was climbing it. No, he never tested for a fall. I'll have to get a court order forcing him to do that. I'd like to take a look at that bookcase. The Winters refused to let us into their house. So we'll also need a court order to see the crime scene. They're going to hate us being there, but we've got no choice. When the case comes down to a false confession, proving it's false isn't enough. We need to prove what really happened. That is a subpoena for notes and any additional video from the first eight hours of your interrogation. Interrogation? It was an interview. There aren't any notes or additional video. Cops turn on the camera once Jenny was ready to confess, not before. There's nothing illegal about that. The only reason you're going after Jenny is because the police got a 911 call from the neighbor earlier that night and they failed to respond. Do you want to show the public that the police did their job right? But they didn't. I'm offended by the suggestion that I'm playing politics with this case. Aren't you? <laughs> they detained the girl for eight hours and failed to notify her parents. That's illegal. She wasn't detained. She volunteered to go, in writing. She signed a Miranda waiver. And that is her written confession. This was a terrible crime. I'm petitioning for a 707 hearing. I want her tried as an adult. The DA wants a 707 hearing. It determines whether Jenny gets juvenile or adult justice. Juvenile sentences are lenient. In adult court, she could get life. Oh, God. Don't worry, Mom. It's gonna be okay. I didn't do anything. Juvenile cases are tried by judges, not a jury. A judge will be more open to the idea that Jenny falsely confessed out of fear. How do they decide whether Jenny goes to adult court? Several factors. The gravity of the crime, its sophistication. The fact that she has no record is good for us. We also need witnesses, teachers, or friends who can testify about Jenny's good character. to the police. They're going to find out who did this. God, this is all my fault. Now they're attacking my parents. Jenny, I've convinced your parents to let us file a motion to have the 707 hearing televised. I thought they couldn't say my name on TV. Everyone's going to hate me. The brick shows the people already know about the case, but all they know about you is what the DA has told them through the media. We want potential jurors to see who you really are, not a faceless monster who confessed to murder. But a scared, innocent girl. Okay? Okay. Are you doing okay? How's school? My date for the winter formal dumped me. I guess this didn't help much. No, my shirt's will even cover it up. I got you these. They have wider sleeves. I think they'll work. These are too expensive. Don't worry. They're Ron's treat. Just don't tell him. Look, Jenny, we want to call character witnesses on your behalf for the 707 hearing. Did you babysit any other kids? Did you ever have any problems with anything before? No, never. Good. I'll need the names of their parents. The DA gave me her witness list for the hearing. Do you recognize any names on it? Emily's on here. Who's Emily? She's my best friend. You didn't talk to her about the case, did you? No. You, you told me not to. So what is she going to say? I don't know. Jenny, she wouldn't be on the list unless she knew something relevant. 
I, I may have said some things about Luke's dad. But that was before the accident. But he was cute. And, then, and I'd like to marry someone like him someday. What? Is that relevant? It's relevant if the DA argues that this crush you had is somehow connected to Luke's death. We found out something about the tape. The cops definitely edited Jenny's confession. You're kidding. You sure? Can we prove it? Maybe. Maybe not. Mendoza was a pro. We knew what he was doing. But we're working on it. I did some checking on Mendoza. He was a military interrogator before joining LAPD. Specialty? Terrorist suspects. Now it's breaking down hardcore gangbangers. What chance did a 15-year-old babysitter have against that? So, Mrs. Rose, were you happy with Jenny as a babysitter? I was, I guess. My son Seth really liked her. Seth's about the same age as Luke was. Is that Seth? Seth, go back in the house. Would you be willing to testify as a character witness on Jenny's behalf? She could use your help. I'm sorry, no. But you said that Jenny wasn't a bad... I said no. She confessed to murdering Luke, right? I'm not gonna help her. On the eve of the hearing to determine whether Jenny Marshall will be tried as an adult, a twist in the babysitter murder case. Ron Trott has released the name of his underage client in a stranger twist. Trott has also asked the judge to televise the hearing. You heard Jenny's friend Emily testify. Jenny Marshall was obsessed with Craig Winters. She loved him. He wasn't interested. To get back at him because he wouldn't be with her, she killed Luke. An innocent crush made her a killer? That's insane. The DA is trying to deflect attention away from the fact that she has no basis to try Jenny as an adult. Jenny is a 15-year-old with no criminal history. This wasn't a crime. It was an accident. It was a crime, an adult crime. In fact, even now, Jenny Marshall is still stalking Craig Winters, even after she murdered his son. We have phone records showing that Jenny called Craig several times in the last few days. Did we know about this? No. There's no reason to check her recent phone records. Alden told her not to talk to anybody. Craig will testify about what she said. Your Honor, Jenny Marshall is so twisted, she actually apologized for killing Craig's son. She didn't just confess to the police, she confessed to the dead boy's father. I just called Mr. Winters to say I was sorry that Luke had died. But I didn't say anything bad, I swear. We told you not to talk to anyone. I know. But I felt so bad for him and his wife, you know. But I never said that I killed Luke. I didn't. I know. You were just trying to do the right thing. The problem is, the law doesn't give you a right to be a decent person. Not when you're on trial for murder. Anything you say to anybody no matter how thoughtful, will be used against you. Sucks, but it's the truth. I don't want you people here. I know, Mr. Winters, we're sorry. We just need to check out the crime scene on behalf of our client. Make it fast, all right? The family's been through enough already. Mr. Winters, do you mind if I ask you a few questions about Jenny? Like, was she ever inappropriate with you? Mr. Winters, you don't have to answer that. What, are you obstructing justice now? No, I'm stating a fact. By law, he doesn't have to talk to you unless he wants to. Look, I understand you're upset. You don't understand a thing. You don't know what I'm going through. My child is dead. My wife left. She couldn't stand to be in the house. We're just trying to seek the truth. That's all. Let it come out in court. The surface of these shells is pretty slick. If Luke had been trying to climb them, it's easy to see how he may have slipped. Police found Luke's fingerprints all over those shelves. And his body was found right here. The bookcase didn't topple over. I guess it's not surprising. It probably weighs a few hundred pounds. But Luke was so small, he wouldn't have moved it. Yeah. What did the medical examiner find? Not much. He said Luke's injuries could have been caused by a fall or a beating. Well, that's helpful. If Luke fell from the top shelf and hit his head on the floor, the impact would have killed him. You said if. You can't tell for sure either? No. See, with head injuries like this, there's so much fracturing. It's hard to know the exact cause of death. But what about the DA story? Jenny's written confession said that she beat Luke with a bat here, but there's no blood spatter. No, the bat would have been covered in blood. Was it? No, it was clean too. 
Jenny's written confession said that she washed it off in the upstairs bathroom. That's convenient for them. I'll say. There wasn't any blood in the hall or the sink. Jenny's confession wasn't just false, it was factually wrong. Look, the first thing your client says to me was, it's my fault. Now, what am I supposed to do? Stop asking her questions? Might have been good to follow the law and get her parents here. So they could hire you to shut her up? Look, she wanted to talk. She was begging to talk. You made her talk. I can't make anyone do anything. Look, detective, I know you. You break gangbangers. Breaking a 15-year-old girl? That must have been easy. It was. You know why? Because she felt guilty. Now, she confessed three times to me, the 911 operator, and to Craig Winters. Look, what I did here was no different than what cops were doing when you were a prosecutor, and you didn't seem to have a problem with it then. This document states that you're agreeing to waive your Miranda rights to counsel and to remain silent. Now, do you want to read it before you sign it? No, that's okay. I already have. Jenny Marshall is smart, an honor student. She understood exactly what she was doing. Mr. Graves, besides your client's recent denial, what proof do you have that this is a false confession? The totality of the circumstances. She was scared. The police lied to her and threatened her. They can do that. Those are legal police tactics. Keeping her from seeing her parents was illegal. Hey, she took back her request to see her parents because she wanted to try and talk her way out of this. She couldn't. Come on. What she was forced to say wasn't even accurate. She said she used a baseball bat. There was no blood spatter at the scene. There was no blood on the bat or the sink because it didn't happen. This was an accident, Your Honor. Yes, there are some factual inconsistencies in her confession. We don't deny that. It doesn't matter. The confession stands alone. We don't need to corroborate it to get it admitted. And by the way, would we even be here if Jenny was a girl from South Central L.A.? Of course not. But a girl with rich lawyers gets the benefit of the doubt? Jenny Marshall's confession must still be admitted under the law. The public expects this court to follow the law. I am compelled to rule that the defendant's confession is admissible at trial. With all due respect. I will instruct the jury that they should decide for themselves if the confession is true. And that's it. Fine. We just have to win this at trial. Okay, the confession's coming in at trial. We knew it might. And we can still argue that it's false. Juries love confessions, Tom. Makes their job real easy. Even if we can prove it was false, it won't be enough. When a child dies, the jury wants to hold someone responsible. Right now, all they've got is Jenny. I think Luke fell off that bookcase. Based on what we saw at the house, it makes the most sense. No one's to blame. The beauty of law is that someone is always to blame. The question is, who? And we all know the answer to that, don't we? It's the elephant in the living room. We don't want to say it because it seems mean. But sometimes our job is to be mean on behalf of our client. I'm sorry, but it's the truth. You want to blame Luke's parents for killing him? No, not criminally. But who puts a 10-foot high bookcase where a kid can climb on it? We won't win. The juries will hate us. Yeah, but Ron's got a point. Jenny warned them that the bookcase was a danger. Blame grieving parents? It's too risky. Forget blaming them. It's about showing the jury this was an accident that could have been avoided, not a crime. An innocent 15-year-old girl shouldn't go to prison for something she didn't do. The focus group understands that it could have been an accident and the parents may have been to blame. But you've got to get that story out before they hear about Janie's confession. Why first? Trials are about giving the jury information. Timing is everything. If they hear about the confession, they don't hear anything else. If they hear about the accident first, they're open to it. But how do we talk about our story first? We don't get to start the case. The DA does. Leave it to me. I have a plan. Good. And if you can neutralize the confession, you might win. Leave that to me. We're going to create a TV segment featuring our interrogation expert. We'll give it to local news channels to reach potential jurors. You can't just create news. Sure we can. The government does it all the time. They're called video news releases. They look like real news reports, but they're actually promotional pieces given to TV stations to air. Overworked and understaffed local affiliates are more than happy to take the segment. News stations will air the piece as if they produced it themselves. And we'll get our story out through television and internet broadcasts. Segment turned out well. How did it play with potential jurors? 
My polling shows that potential jurors are open to the idea of a false confession, but Luther has to make sure that they hear about the accident first. Do we have any parents here? Raise your hands. This is a very hard case. It involves the death of a child. And as a father, I wouldn't want to be on this jury. Does anyone else feel that way? Hmm. Jury number one, let me ask you. Has your child ever been hurt accidentally? My daughter broke her arm playing on a swing set at the park. Accidents at the park. We can all relate to that. Now, when it happened, did you blame someone for it? Someone at the park? No. Why not? Because it was an accident. There was no one to blame. Do you think you could have prevented it? I suppose so. If I had been watching her more closely. I know how you feel. As parents, we want to do everything we can to keep our kids safe. Don't we? You son of a bitch. You're gonna say this is our fault? Luke was our life! I don't blame him for being angry. I would be. You did your job. You got our story out. You had to. Yeah. Are we doing the right thing, Ron? We can't prove for sure this was an accident. We don't have to. The DA has to prove it wasn't an accident. But the medical examiner can't say for sure what killed Luke. The physical evidence doesn't point to murder either. That adds up to reasonable doubt. Reasonable doubt. She confessed to murder. No, but we're sticking with accident. Right now, the truth is the only thing we've got going for us. It was my fault. I was mad at Luke. I did him. I killed him. She's played the confession tape five times. It's killing us. I wouldn't be so sure. The more she plays it, the less impact it has. The defense on the Rodney King case showed the beating so much. The jury stopped caring. What was the defendant's attitude? when she spoke to you? In general, she was calm. She only got upset when she talked about how she killed the boy. But I think she was relieved to get it off her chest. Most defendants who confess, they feel relief. What is it you do for a living? What is your job? I'm a detective. I solve crimes. Really? I thought a detective's job was to investigate crimes. I don't see the difference. Solving means you're out to get someone. Investigating means you're willing to go wherever the evidence takes you. You made up your mind Jenny Marshall killed Luke the moment you took her to the station, didn't you? Once she said it was her fault, I sure did, yes. You never considered that Luke's death may have been an accident? I didn't have to. Once your client said she killed the boy. After you had kept her in the police station overnight without counsel or her parents? After she hadn't slept for 24 hours? After you had lied to her about evidence you never had? And threatened that she would get the death penalty? Unless she confessed. All I did was get her to tell the truth, just like in any other case. But in this case, you manipulated the so-called truth, didn't you? I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Your watch. It says 7.30 here. And then, 4.50. If you rewind the tape just a few seconds back, now, you took different parts of Jenny's coerced statement and pieced them together to make one long confession. You deceived this jury. There were some problems with the camera. I had to stop and restart several times. I did my job right. Right. But as you said, your job was to solve this crime. And you were going to do whatever it took to prove my client guilty, including creating a confession. Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. You didn't have anything else to prove your murder theory. Your own medical examiner couldn't determine whether Luke's death was caused by a blow with a bat. Isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. She used to call me all the time. She'd ask if I could drive her home after she babysat. I thought it was just a crush. I was wrong. When was the last time that she called? 
after she killed my son, she had the nerve to call me and apologize for killing him. Thank you. No further questions. Jenny called you all the time about babysitting, right? No questions about what Luke was eating or doing. Yes. The night Luke died, she called you four times. But you didn't answer. Why didn't you answer or call her back? I never heard the call. You were at a party. We spoke to some of the guests. They said you were drinking that night? I was. I took my wife to a party and we had drinks. We hired a babysitter and she killed our son. Now, my wife and I are splitting up. What's your point? Just that accidents happen. You didn't ignore Jenny's call. You accidentally didn't hear it. And maybe you accidentally forgot about the several times she warned you that that bookcase was a danger. I'm sorry about your son. Sometimes I hate this job. When the DA asks you something, just answer her questions. Don't volunteer anything. They fired my mom today. She's a nurse. The doctor she worked for she said that they were getting too many crank calls about this case. This is ruining my parents' lives. You know, one of the costs of being accused is that your family suffers too. I promise, your parents will be okay. Especially after you're cleared of this. Sometimes I think that it would be better for everybody if I was dead. I'm gonna have someone talk to you. A counselor. I think it'll help. I know things seem hard right now. But you need to stay strong. For yourself. And for your parents. We can't put Jenny on the stand in her state of mind. I think it's the best time to put her on. Look, she's in the same emotional state she was in when she went with the police. And the jury's going to see how they were able to force a false confession out of her. Tom, she's having a nervous breakdown. You want to exploit that in court? I don't want to exploit anything. I'm just... I just want her acquitted. So she can go back to school and be with her friends. Just get her life back. It was my I said that I killed Luke, uh, but I didn't. I just felt guilty because I didn't protect him. And after being locked up, in that room with the police all night. I didn't know what I was saying. I was so scared. And tired. And I just, I just wanted it to end. But I would have never, ever hurt Luke. Thank you, Jenny. Jenny, throughout this case, you'd agree that there's been one consistent story. You killed Luke. No, I didn't. You told the 911 operator that it was your fault, didn't you? Yes. It's what you told Detective Mendoza, too, right? Before he even took you to the station. Because I felt guilty. Because, because you killed Luke. It's the reason you called Craig Winters to apologize. Why would you have apologized otherwise? Innocent people don't apologize. No further questions. At this time, Your Honor, we'd like to call a rebuttal witness to the stand. A rebuttal to what? A rebuttal to Jenny's claim that she never hurt Luke or any other child. We'd like to call Seth Rose. She babysat him. He's going to testify that she beat him. What? 
Seth, when Jenny babysat, did she ever do anything to hurt you? Yes. She hit me. Why did she do that? Did she tell you why, Seth? She said I was noisy. That my mom and dad wouldn't like that. Did you tell your mom and dad that Jenny hit you? No. Why not? Seth, did Jenny tell you not to tell your mom and dad? Jenny said she would hurt me if I did. Thank you, Seth. Your witness. I talked to Seth's mother, Deborah, when we first took the case. She didn't mention anything about abuse. You think the boy's lying? Here's an idea. Let's not call an eight-year-old boy a liar in front of the jury. Give another suggestion. Let me take care of this. Seth, do you want to be here? No, sir. I understand. Thank you. We have no further questions for Seth, but we will call Deborah Rose to the stand, the boy's mother. I already talked to your partner about this. Yes, you said you thought Jenny was a good babysitter. I said we'd like Jenny. You liked her so much you asked her to babysit a lot, right? Because I didn't know. Seth hadn't told us about what happened. When exactly did Seth tell you? Was it after Jenny was arrested? Yes. Did he tell you himself, or did you ask him? We talked about it. I was concerned after Luke was killed. You saw on TV that your babysitter confessed to murdering another little boy, and you got scared. I became upset. Which also may have upset Seth. No. I have children, too. If I heard their babysitter confess to murder, I would grill my kids about whether she did something to them. I didn't grill Seth. You just questioned him until he told you Jenny heard him. He didn't make it up. No, you did. Not on purpose. He just said what he thought you wanted to hear. Better job, but Luke would still be here. You don't deserve to go to prison. Not for an accident. On the single count of murder in the first degree, as to the defendant, Jenny Marshall, the jury finds the defendant not guilty. my son what about Luke I'm so sorry she killed Luke and you helped her get away with it I'm sad. 
A murder victim's dying words leave Sarah reeling in brand new CSI. That's coming up in just a moment here on Living.